When you picture a tarantula in your mind, this is what you're most likely going to envision. This is a Mexican ridney tarantula, also known as a Brachypelma smithy. These are what Hollywood likes to use in movies, and they are one of the most iconographic tarantulas. I'm here today to tell you about the tarantula hobby. As a tarantula enthusiast, I bought my first tarantula in February 2010, and I've been interested in researching them and reading about them since October of last year. Tarantulas are split into different groups. There are terrestrial tarantulas, which are ground-dwelling, and arboreal tarantulas, which are tree-dwelling. They are also split into two categories based on geographic location. New World tarantulas live in North and South America. Old World tarantulas live in Africa, Asia, Australia, and the surrounding islands. The largest tarantula in the world is the Therophosa blondi, also known as the Goliath bird eater. These have been known to reach lifespans of 11 to 12 inches. They can be as big as a dinner plate. And they live in Venezuela. Another example of a new world tarantula is this Avicularia versicolor. These are tropical tarantulas that live in trees. Now one thing about new world tarantulas is that they have a special mechanism for defense. This mechanism is urticating hairs. Urticating hairs are chemically irritating bristles, not hairs, as only mammals can have hairs, that the tarantula rubs with its two back legs into the air that can be shot towards the direction of predator eyes, nose, and mouth. They are very irritating, especially to mucous membranes. Also, if these hairs get on your skin, you'll likely get a rash. However, the old world tarantulas do not have these hairs. They have a more potent bite. This is a picture of a Pocotheria regalis, also known as an Indian ornamental. This species has one of the most potent bites of any tarantula in the world. It can cause intense pain and cramping for months after the bite. Another example of a old world tarantula is this Heteroscadra maculata, the ornamental baboon tarantula. It too has one of the more potent bites of the tarantula spiders. According to the World Spider Catalog, there are 928 different species of tarantulas. Some of them are even critically endangered. Now when you think of a tarantula, you think of a spider. But tarantulas have certain anatomy features that are unique to them. A tarantula, at first glance, looks like it has ten legs. But the first two appendages by its fangs are not legs. They are pedipalps, and they are used for holding prey. And in the males, they are used to signify an intention to mate. And they are drummed on the ground so the female does not mistake the male for food. The tarantula's legs are segmented into five parts, and on the tips of the feet are two tarsal claws. The portion of the head area on a tarantula is called the prosoma, and the abdomen area is either called the abdomen or the apestosoma. Tarantulas have eight eyes, and the tarantula has two large fangs that are used for injecting venom into its prey. And the body part that the fangs are attached to are called the chelicerae. Tarantulas also have two spinnerets that have, you know, silk glands, much like other spiders. Tarantulas use silk for several different reasons. Tarantulas use silk to create nests, and they use silk to have feeding mats, kind of like a little placemat for tarantulas. They also use silk to molt. Now, what is molting, you might ask. 
molting is what a spider does, particularly tarantula, also all spiders, to grow. They have hard exoskeletons and cannot grow without shedding their outer skin. So what a tarantula does to molt is they flip over onto their back and their skin exoskeletons are split. And then they will crawl out of their old exoskeleton. They will be soft and, harm and easily harmed. And their fangs will be soft too, so they cannot eat for about a week or so. And they're very vulnerable at this time. But this is the only way, molting, is the only way that it can grow. And they do that in their babies, they do it more frequently, about four times a year. And when they're adults, they do it about once a year, even every other year, depending on the size of the tarantula. Tarantulas in the wild are, there. I mean, some are critically endangered, some aren't. One of the most critically endangered tarantulas is the Pocolotheria metallica. This spider is stunningly blue and gold, and their habitat is being destroyed at an alarming rate, and what the best thing to do for the species population is captive breeding. If, you know, captive breeding sustains the population, then, you know, it won't go extinct, which is good. Anyway, according to, can we stop it and can we just, in conclusion, Tarantulas are fascinating. I encourage you to look into them and, you know, they're not scary monsters. They're beautiful. They come in all colors of the rainbow, you know, blue, pink, purple. Name a color and there's a tarantula that has those colors. Tarantulas can be very rewarding to watch and take care of. And they even have personalities. Even though it's not like a dog or a cat, they still have personalities. I therefore encourage you to think twice about thinking that they're creepy, crawly, or scary, because they're not. And I hope the information I presented to you today has given you a new insight into understanding tarantulas. Thank you.